So, this is going to be a three to four video part series on how to draw things that have more than one central atom in them. Now, I hesitate to give you a video on this for two reasons. Is one, it kind of sits on the edge of what we really cover in Chem 1, and two, it kind of misrepresents how well, you'll really talk about this in organic chemistry. So let's do the full disclosure and definition videos first, and then we'll talk about how to actually draw all these structures. So in terms of the full disclosure, I'm going to show you how to draw molecules with more than one central atom. And we'll talk about how organic formulas are used to articulate the backbones and all the different things that go into it. The reality is that most people don't do what we're doing in this video. They start with what we're doing and then they just kind of memorize what the answer is supposed to be based on the functional group. It's kind of like calculus. There's a way to take a derivative by taking the limit as the step gets really small, but nobody actually does it. People just memorize what the derivatives are. They don't take the limit as, as delta goes to zero. Same thing's gonna be true here. So we're gonna use this as a primer on how you would do this, but realize that when you get organic chemistry, you'll maybe do this one more time and then you'll just memorize what the answers are. So let's talk about drawing more than one central atom. Now organic chemists kind of realized a long time ago that if we look at a chemical formula like C5H14, formula for pentane, this is not a particularly useful chemical formula because it doesn't really tell you anything about the structure of the molecule. There's lots of different ways to connect C5H4. So when organic chemists write molecular formulas, this is a molecular formula, we can write it two ways. One, we can write it in a condensed form where we only see the number of atoms and hydrogens. And in chem one, this is what you're most used to seeing. In organic, what they do is they take the chemical formula and they write it out with two things emphasized. The first are what are called the functional groups. So C5H14 is really CH3, CH2, 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 CH3. A functional group is a central atom and it's periphery atoms that basically always have the same structure and they have a particular property associated with them. So when we have these CH2 groups, this functional group is called an alkane group. You have carbon connected to hydrogen. Now, we can have other functional groups, alcohols, OHs. So if you see an OH in the chain, that's a functional group. We can have carbonyls, carbon down, double bound to oxygen, C double bond O. That's a functional group. Amines, C NH2 groups, amines, NH groups. There's lots of different combinations. Those are all outside the scope of this class. But the big thing here is that the reason we have drawn it this way is to emphasize two details. The first is that this is a functional group. It is a carbon with hydrogen bound to it. The second is that it emphasizes what atoms are bound to each other and which ones are central atoms. So typically, when we see it written like this, what we're really saying is that we have a central atom for each functional group. This carbon is the central atom of CH3. This carbon is the central atom of CH2. CH2, CH2, and CH3. Each of the central atoms within that functional group are connected together. Now, the carbons that are connected to more than one atom that's also a central atom, so this is a central, this is a central, this is a central, are called bridging atoms. And we call them bridging atoms because they bridge functional groups. So this carbon connects these two functional groups, this carbon connects these two functional groups, this carbon connects these two functional groups. A bridging atom will also make up what's called the backbone of the molecule. So the backbone is a series of atoms, central atoms that are all connected to each other. In this case, everything you see highlighted red. So if we were to look at this molecule, focusing only on things that constitute a central atom within their functional group, we would see a backbone of carbons. Now, typically a functional group will also have what are called terminal atoms attached to it. These are atoms that don't bridge to another functional group, in this case, hydrogen. So a terminal atom is typically an atom that only forms one bond, in this case, hydrogen and fluorine. Now, oxygen can also be a terminal atom if it's double bound to a carbon. But typically, our terminal atoms are centered around the atoms that make up our bridge, our bridging atoms, our carbon chain. So what we're gonna do with this knowledge is we're gonna use this to construct molecules based on how they should be connected based on their chemical formulas. And from there, we're gonna be able to build up larger and larger molecules. So 
Now that we've got some definitions now, let's go to the next video and let's actually talk about how you draw these types of structures.